Good afternoon, everyone. Hope oh, I'm uh, audible to you all. Hello. I'm not audible. Okay, fine. fine. Okay. So, in our uh, uh, last, I mean, before session, uh, we had gone through some of the uh, protocols which are collision free. Okay. We'll continue with some more uh, collision free protocols. One of them is token ring. Okay. There is less documentation. Is documentation is there all of Is the screen visible to you all? Hello. Is the screen visible to you all? Okay. So uh, one of the collision free protocol is uh, is this uh, token ring. In this token ring. Uh, a ring type of topology is used. You know, uh, what do you mean by topology? The way how the uh, stations are interconnected with each other, that is known as a uh, uh, topology. And here you can see that these are all the stations. Okay, these are all the stations which are connected in this uh, format, that is a ring type of format. Okay, a special frame uh, is sent, which is known as a token. And that token would be rotating throughout this ring okay yes Nira. okay throughout this ring a token would be uh, circulated a station which has the token only that station would be capable of transmitting the frame okay say suppose station a is here b is here and say suppose some x is here y is here okay so suppose Y wants to send a frame, wants to transmit a frame, the token which is here, it would, uh, when it reaches to the station Y, this station Y would grab the token or it would hold the token and it, uh, uh, the, the station which has that particular token, only that station would be able to uh, transmit the frame throughout this ring. So when the frame uh, passes through this ring and when it reaches back to the station Y, okay, are you getting this? It is circulated and when it reaches again uh, back to, to, uh, to the station Y, it removes that data, uh, that uh, frame from the uh, network and again it would set back this token freely onto this ring. Now, after Y says, suppose Z is there. Now, in case if Z is having uh, some data frame which is ready to be forwarded or which is to be transmitted, then it can again hold the token and it can send the uh, data frame. And if it does not have any frame which is ready to be transmitted, then it can just set that token free and it would uh, send it to the next station, that is the station um, uh, station A. So this is how the token uh, ring would work. Okay, And as you know that uh, only one token is there into the network. And uh, since only one token is there, that means on only one station at a time would be able to use this, uh, uh, would be able to transmit through this network. And hence, the, there is a, uh, the collision cannot be, uh, it would not be occurred. Okay. So you can see that token is sent around, around the ring. Uh, station with token may send the frame before passing. Okay. The station which holds the token only that has the, uh, that can send the frame through this uh, ring. Uh, and the rest of the stations has to be idle, okay? Then uh, here, the same uh, uh, the same concept of token passing can also be used for a bus type of topology, which is also known as a token bus, okay? So the IEEE 802.4, it uses a bus type of to topology and it uses this token passing mechanism that we'll see. Okay, so you can see that uh, here we are having a coaxial cable uh, uh, whose uh, uh, bandwidth is usually used as uh, 75 ohm. Okay. 
and it uses a broadband co coaxial cable you all uh, you all are aware of the type of cables we have which we have learned already in the second uh, chapter okay and it uses this analog modulation okay so you know what do you mean by modulation you might have studied in your i think uh, plus 2 classes in which the data would be uh, transmitted uh, by uh, adding with certain uh, of or uh, by multiplying or adding with certain uh, high frequency signals so we are having am fm etc amplitude modulation frequency modulation etc so such analog modulation is uh, used uh, for uh, data transmission through this coaxial cable which is of 75 uh, ohm okay and the speed can be around 1 5 or 10 megabits per second right here what happens you know uh, physically these are connected in the form of a uh, bus bus uh, type of topology is used but there are number of stations which are in uh, connected with each other in the form of a logical ring a logical ring would be there uh, which you can see here now whenever a token is passing okay so uh, after this uh, station is the next uh, the next station which has the turn would be the station e okay so even if the token is on to the bus the one the station which holds the token only that station would be able to uh, use the uh, uh, network or use the net uh, channel so that it can transmit the uh, uh, frame through this channel okay so after station a the next station which can hold the token is station e then it would be station d and so on so on no doubt here the topology is the bus topology the token is just moving uh, through the uh, you know, into this bus but uh, logically they are arranged in the form of a ring so that they can communicate or uh, the one which has the token only that particular station would be able to communicate uh, or it would be able to transmit through this particular physical link is it clear so there are a certain uh, frame format of uh, this ieee 802.4 but uh, uh, just this is the concept of how this token uh, uh, passing Pro, uh, algorithm is used even for the bus type of structure okay and it uses this uh, the standard which is provided is ieee 802.4 now uh, the next one is eight ieee 802.5 okay this also use station which no here uh, we are talking about point to point communication station which has token can transfer packet to uh usually uh, at present what we are talking is uh, about is only a single source is uh, uh, transmitting to a single destination uh, in that case uh, you can see that uh, here the frame format is not provided so you have the source address in that you have the destination address in that so in this destination address you cannot have more than one destination address for uh, more than one host okay a single uh, field would be there for the destination address it might be possible that there can be a broadcast type of address are you getting me okay instead of a single address there can be a broadcast address so that all the host can be able to access the uh, data but it is not uh, for more than one destination it is not we are not providing this uh, it cannot provide the data is it clear next uh, a slight variation of this uh, token bus is nothing but the token ring okay so here the topology is what we have discussed uh, while we were di discussing about the token passing that is it uses the ring type of topology okay so here also logically it is a ring type of uh, uh, topology but it uses a physical star type of uh, topology in which here you can have a central hub would be there and number of hosts are connected through this star type of topology here there would be one more host and here one for uh, transmitting transmitter the other cable is for receiving receiver one more for transmitter the other one can be for the receiver there is third host and so on okay so here you can see that uh, uh, logically it is arranged in the form of a ring but physically it is using a star type of topology okay here 
uh, after say suppose station A, the next station which uh, can hold the token is station B. Are you getting this? Hello, is this thing clear? The way how it is connected, the central hub would be there, and uh, we have studied about the star type of topology in which the number of stations are connected to this hub. One uh, one would be the transmitter, the other one would be the receiver. Okay, and this after station A, now the token would be first passed by the hub to the station A. If it has the uh, token, it may uh, send the data frame to the hub and uh, by looking at the destination, it would forward it to the uh, required destination. And once it has finished the transmission, it can set free the token and then the, since the next turn is for the station B. And then now this uh, token would be sent to the station B and accordingly it would continue further. Is this thing clear? See. Maintenance is about adding features or about improving existing systems or some other ah. systems. Okay. Now, why do we require it when we are having it zero two point four? Okay. So, uh, in uh, apart from uh, the seventy five ohm K coaxial cable, what we have seen, okay, here uh, this would use. Uh, that is 802.5 use uh, a different type of cabling like un and the bandwidth would also be more are you getting this no doubt the topology uh, i mean the concept is same but here they are using the ring type of topology uh, in some systems or in some network they they may find it more appropriate or they may find that it would be very uh, it would be helpful if you if they use this ring type of topology or star type of topology. In some networks, they uh, if the bus type of topology is there, then also it would be fine. Okay, so okay, so the speed for this uh, uh, eight zero two point five is that it is around four to sixteen megabits per second. But what what about eight zero two point four? What we have seen. It is up to 10 megabits per second. And here you can see the speed is up to 16 megabits per second. Okay. Then uh, it, it may use uh, unshielded twisted pair cabling or shielded twisted pair cabling. Whereas uh, in case of 802.4, they, they were using the coaxial cables. Okay. Then uh, different uh, uh, this differential Manchester encoding. So uh, in the next class, I think you may learn how about the type of encoding which is used in the Ethernet. Okay, so Manchester and differential Manchester Manchester encoding. The way how the uh, uh, logic zero or logic one is represented that can be that you can learn uh, in the next class. Then the access method is token passing. That's all. Okay, so this is about the IEEE 802.5. Now, there is still some variation. Then came uh, the next type of uh, network that is FDDI, that is Fiber Distributed Data Interface. Okay, so we'll see that. Even this uses the same token passing type of network. This is the, an example of FDDI, FDDI. Okay, so which stands for Fiber Distributed. Data interface. Uh, Ethernet is IEEE 802.3. Are you getting this? Ethernet is IEEE. Ethernet is I Ethernet is also a standard, but it was IEEE 802.3. For token bus, the standard what they have defined is 802.4. For token ring, it is 802.5. Okay. Fine. So next uh, uh, Network which uses this uh, token passing is FDDI, that is Fiber Distributed Data Interface. Okay, and this Fiber di uh, Distributed Data Interface, it has dual ring. You can see that this is one ring, that this is the other ring. Okay, so one of them is the primary ring, 
and the other one is the secondary ring or uh, you can say that the backup ring okay so they have used two different rings so that if one fails that uh, the system would not uh, go down the other ring should continue working with that so you can see that all these hosts are connected to both these rings fine if one of the uh, ring would fail uh, the system would still continue to work with the other ring and here as uh, the name indicates it uses the fiber optic cables for the uh, data transmission so usually this uh, fddi uh, this is used uh, as a backbone backbone means what if you are having number of lands number of uh, uh, lan 1 lan 2 etc are there and if they are have to be connected to each other then this fddi type of uh, uh, this ring is used for as a backbone which can be used to connect different uh, lan different types of nan or lan or different lan networks can be interconnected with each other fine so the it supports up to 500 nodes per ring so you can see here there are only few but actually physically you, you can, uh, when it is implemented the maximum number of nodes which which it can support is up to 500 nodes that means in in a single ring the, the 500 nodes can be connected to this ring okay and the the maximum length of this cable ring is around 100 kilometers okay so we can have a token uh, this fddi ring the maximum that uh, maximum size of the ring can be up to 100 kilometer so you can lay a 100 kilometer ring and uh, around 500 nodes can be connected to this particular ring between two different nodes okay uh, the maximum distance can be two kilometers okay two nodes can be two kilometers apart so this is the maximum distance and uh, and in case say suppose if one of the ring fails then uh, these ring would wrap up like this okay if one of the ring fails there uh, so suppose this part is failed then the two rings would be interconnected in such a way that this is known as a wrap up they wrap each uh, to each other so that this uh, the faulty part can be ignored and still the ring would continue to work is this thing clear hello so for fddi we have okay if you are having 500 uh, more than 500 nodes okay ah, one thing is that if you are having more than 500 nodes uh, as you have here the wrap up what you are able to see okay so if uh, i we wrap up then at, at uh, up to 1000 nodes can be interconnected with each other are you getting me urjit the maximum number of nodes which can be connected if we are wrapping up this these two uh, cables so uh, the maximum number of nodes which are connected is around 1000 nodes okay and it uh, the maximum distance would be around 200 kilometers so it would up to 200 kilometers we can have uh, uh, so the, those many uh, up to distance 200 kilometers we can enlarge our ring is it clear okay <clears throat> then uh, sometimes we are having also uh, uh, usually we are having a half duplex type of communication can we combine two fddis okay there should be some repeater or some switch or some hub which can connect two fddis we'll see uh, how to connect uh, two different lands etc uh, as we go further okay fine uh, there are certain variation of this fddi which is also known as a uh, fddi full duplex technology okay which is also known as a fddt full uh, that is fddi full duplex technology f okay in this case ffdt sorry it is full duplex te uh, technology here uh, usually the uh, in simple fddi uh, uh, we are having only half duplex what do you mean by half duplex and full duplex are you aware about it simplex half duplex 
Okay. So uh, a simple FDDI is a half duplex type of uh, <coughs> communication can be carried out. But by by using this uh, F, FDT, that is uh, FDDI full duplex, duplex technology, uh, we can have we can apply this full duplex so that a part of the bandwidth can be used for the transmission the other part of the bandwidth can be used for the as a receiver okay apart from that if say suppose uh, here since we are having two different cables uh, one can be used for the transmission the other can be used for the reception okay so like this uh, we can have some variation of this FDDI so that we can achieve the full uh, duplex communication with the uh, uh, throughout the network. So Is this thing clear? If the second ring is not needed for the backup, then it, the second uh, ring can also be used as a, a one for uh, one uh, data can be transmitted in this direction, the other data can be transmitted in this direction. That way also it can be done. Okay. So uh, th these are the some of the variations which uh, uses this token passing technology. That is 802.4, 802.5, as well as FDDI. Uh, so, in uh, as I said, uh, here we are having two rings. Uh, among that, one of them is primary, the other one is for the backup. Say, suppose uh, one of the ring would fail, then still the network would not go down. It would continue with the other ring. Is it clear, Urjit? Okay. Now, in case if, say, suppose uh, sometimes what happens in uh, the FDDI would wrap up. Wrap up means what? Wherever there is a uh, problem. So, suppose here the link broken or some system has gone, gone down. Then what it will do? It will make a connection between these two. And uh, the part whichever is broken, that would be uh, ignored. And then uh, the cable would be connected like this. So this is known as a FDDI wrap-up. So now you can see that uh, the size now has been doubled. Actually, it was 100 kilometers. That was for both dual ring. Okay, But now after wrap-up, it has increased. It can be up to 200 kilometers. For, okay, So this is about the uh, token passing uh, type of... Uh, uh, technology okay after that next we'll see so here it is uh, a brief of this is given it contains two token rings for possible backup in case the primary ring fails okay and here it, which we have discussed uh, 100 megabits per second token passing and it uses dual ring and since by the name itself it indicates that it uses a fiber optic cable well, follow then uh, up to 500 nodes per ring is there and it would go up to 100 kilometers and 2 kilometers apart. Ah, one more thing. If I am having a multi-mode fiber, then uh, the maximum distance between two stations can be up to 2 kilometers. But if we are having a single mode fiber, the maximum distance between the station can be up to 10 kilometers. So what do you mean by multi-mode and single mode fiber? Increase. Are you aware about it? So this is your fiber. In the single mode fiber, the data would be transmitted in the single line like this. Whereas in case of multi-mode fiber, it, there would be a total internal reflection and hence uh, the data would be, I mean, it travels a lot of distance and hence uh, it would be deteriorated and hence you can see that it... Uh, multiple so uh, it depends upon the type of fiber what you are using multiple light rays can uh, see uh, multiple light rays it, it is the angle of incidence what we are talking about hello so here as we know that it uses a total internal reflection okay so if you are having different wavelength and different frequencies, then it will have this uh, total internal reflection and then the signal would, uh, would be passed through this uh, cable. In case of uh, multi-mode fi fiber, since we are, it is passing, it is reflecting like this, 
whereas in the single mode fiber the uh, light ray passes through a straight line and hence the speed also is more in case of single mode fiber because it is traveling in a straight line is it clear everyone so this is about the fddi next we'll see one more uh, type of uh, uh, communication with that is known as a wdma that is wavelength division multiple axis wdma stands for single how can we do this what do you think can you tell me is it possible manually wavelength division multiple axis it is same as that of fdm that is frequency division multiplexing do you know what is fdm tdm etc okay so uh, since we are using here the type of uh, channel is uh, it is using the optical fiber and hence uh, usually the data transmission through this optical fibers they use the term usually with the wave uh, they use uh, the they don't use the term frequency but they use the wavelength term okay and hence it uses this uh, wdma is used that is wavelength division multiple axis fine here in this wavelength division multiple axis say suppose uh, if i am having a station a okay so every station has two channels one is known as the control channel and the other one is known as a data channel okay one is known as a control channel this is known and the, the narrow channel is a control channel and the broader channel would be the data channel so github is what github is okay now in this in the wavelength division uh, multiple axis every data channel as well as control channel they are divided into number of slots so some slots would be like this either in the data channel or into the control channel so in the control channel we'll have the uh, the control signals or con uh, the uh, i mean the uh, handshake signal you can say so all those signals would be sent through the control channel and the da uh, the data is sent through the data channel and all this data channel as well as control channel are divided into time slots or they are grouped uh, they are uh, provided as a time slots and uh, uh, say suppose the control channel is having m number of slots m slots are there for the control channel and n plus 1 slot is for uh, there for the data channel now among this n plus 1 slots n slot is used for the data and one slot is used for uh, it is uh, used for the status status of the uh, uh, both the data channel as well as the control channel that we can make out using this one channel which is there into this data channel okay and all these all the stations are synchronized using a common clock fine all the stations are, uh, all of them are synchronized using the con uh, common clock now say suppose uh, uh, the type of uh, traffic which is supported by this WDMA is uh, a constant data rate, connection oriented traffic can be provided, constant data rate connection oriented. This can also be, uh, this can be uh, provided by this WDMA. The other type of traffic which is uh, which is supported by WDMA is uh, variable data rate, variable data rate connection oriented traffic, as well as datagram traffic. These are the three different types of traffic which is supported by this WDMA. Constant data rate connection oriented, variable data rate connection oriented, as well as the datagram traffic, which is nothing but the connectionless traffic. Fine. Now, whenever uh, and every station, each station has four. Uh, like you can see that uh, it has four uh, such uh, uh, transmitters as well as receivers. Uh, each station has a fixed wavelength receiver for listening to its own control channel. As I said. 
uh, every station has two channels. One is known as a control channel, and another is known as a data channel. Now, uh, uh, every station would have a fixed wavelength receiver. Okay, they are able to re receive, or they they are able to uh, hear about, or they are able to listen about their own control channel. Okay, then a tunable transmitter for sending on other stations control channel. Say suppose B is also there. Now, if A wants to communicate with B, uh, then uh, A has to tune its control channel to B's control channel. Are you getting this? A, a fixed wavelength receiver to, re to listen to its own control channel. And if it wants to communicate with B, it has to tune its control channel to the B's control channel. Okay, A tunable transmitter and send the control signals to the B a tunable transmitter for sending on other stations control channel then a fixed wavelength transmitter for outputting data frames so if data has to be sent through the data channel then a transmitter should be there which is of fixed wavelength and a tunable receiver and there should be some receiver uh, uh, say suppose uh, it wants to communicate with p and uh, uh, a wants to send some data, then A has to put its data onto its uh, data channel. Whereas if it wants to receive something from B, then what it has to do, A has to tune its data channel to B's data channel so that it can receive it from B. Is this thing clear? Hello? OK. So say so suppose uh, if uh, A wants to communicate with B, Okay, we'll uh, uh, take an example in which uh, A wants to send some data to a file has to be transmitted to the station B. In that case, what it will do? First, A, what it will do? It will tune its data channel to uh, B's data channel because A wants to see which of the slots of B is free. Are you getting this? As I said, uh, it has N plus one slots. Among that, N slots is for data and one slot is for status. This status in uh, slot would give the information of the channels uh, of this control, which part of the control channel is free and which of the data channel is free. Okay, so first A has to tune its uh, data channel to B's data channel and wait for the this status slot to check which of the uh, control channel of B is free. Are you getting my point? Hello. Hello. Is this thing clear? What I mean to say, or shall I repeat it once again? After releasing the software, when the screen happens, I will Okay. Now, A has to send a data to B. Some file has to be sent to B. Okay. So for that, as I know, as I said, the data channel has n plus one slot. Okay, and n n slot is for data, and one slot is for the status. Fine. Now A has to tune A A's data channel has to tune to B's data channel to get the status slot of B. The status slot of B contains the status information of the control channel, which of the channel control channel is free, and which of the data channel is free. Are you getting this? The status slot contains the information of the uh, occupancy of this control channel as well as the data channel. Now, once it uh, B uh, station A reads the status slot of B, what it will do? Uh, it finds which of the control channel is empty, and it would put the connection request at that particular slot. Uh, of B. Are you getting this? B, A reads the status slot. Okay, now what it has to do? A has to tune its transmitter for sending other stations control channel. As I said, B, all these station would have, they will listen to their own control channel. Okay. Now B's A sends a request to the B's control channel. B is hearing its own uh, control channel. 
now whenever a con connection request has been made by b uh, by a to the b because b is listening to its con own control channel okay are you getting my point now hello okay b is listening to its own control channel a has put the request on b's control channel and b is listening to its control channel now now what happens a comes uh, b would accept that request by sending again the status uh, by sending the uh, acknowledgement of uh, that request on this status slot now once because a is listening to its own uh, uh, status slot so now once it a has received it what it will do it would uh, it would uh, tune uh, to the uh, b channel and it it uh, sorry sorry a, a will put because the, the transmitter is of uh, fixed wavelength a will put its data onto the uh, onto its data channel and b has to tune it to its uh, uh, to the a's data channel and it will accept the data is this thing clear shall i repeat it once again it's a bit confusing like which is the variable and which is tunable and which is of fixed length shall i repeat it once again and then the see a wants to send some file to b so suppose uh, huh. in that case what it will do a will first sends the b's uh, status slot and it finds which of the status uh, control channel as well as data channel is free once uh, uh, in that case a will send Uh, a will send a connection request into the uh, empty slot of the control channel of b which b is listening now when b listens to it and it finds that uh, and it uh, agrees that uh, it's okay uh, you can put your data onto this number of slot okay now what it will do a will a is having the fixed wavelength transmitter so what it will do a will send the data onto its own data channel okay and what the b would has to do it has to tune to the a's data channel and it can accept the data from this a is this thing clear everyone now will it give you more clarity okay this is how uh, the wavelength division multiple access would work fine so you can see that since we are using the fiber optic cable okay and usually uh, the Uh, they, uh, the medium of communication is through the light, and uh, for that we are talking about usually the uh, we, uh, they use the term as the wavelength. It is very much similar to the frequency division multiplexing, but instead of frequency they use the term wavelength. That's all. Okay. So this is about the wavelength division multiple axis. So till now whatever we have learned that was for the wired networks. Okay. So next we'll see. the various protocols which are used for the wireless lan wireless uh, networks okay so can you tell me what are the challenges uh, which are faced uh, for the wireless uh, networks we have uh, learned about csma ca etc talking about how five principles of wireless network hello what is csma uh, we have uh, learned about csma cd csma ca what is csma what does it csma stands for carrier sense multiple access if you remember okay that, what do you mean by that that means we are sensing the carrier before actually carrier means what we are sensing the channel before actually the data transmission is carried out that is nothing but carrier sensing isn't it we are reading the channel or we are listening to the channel whether it is free or not okay so for the wireless lan we have already already studied about the csma ca uh, and we have seen csma cd that means as soon as the collision has occurred uh, in case of wired network it can easily be uh, uh, we can make out that as uh, a collision has occurred because uh, Uh, the amount of uh, uh, the power of the data would be increased that we have discussed but in case of csma ca in case of wireless lan what happens wireless networks uh, the power of the uh, if a collision has occurred the uh, the 
uh, station would not be able to see whether there is a collision or not because the power would be reduced a lot okay and hence it would be difficult to make out whether there is a collision or not isn't it so this is one such uh, problem which we find when we are using this wireless lan protocols other thing is that uh, say suppose uh, we are having these uh, stations uh, and all these uh, they use the radio networks or radio channels can be used or uh, radio signals can be used uh, for the communications isn't it uh, you don't have a physical connect connection or physical communication but you use the radio signals for communicating uh, with each other now in in such type of networks what happens is uh, now say suppose we are having such four stations a b c d okay now a is in the range of b whereas b is also in the range of c but it might be possible that if a is uh, uh, d is very far apart then uh, a will not be i mean d cannot sense any uh, signal which is around a are you getting me hello isn't it d cannot sense say suppose now even if we use the carrier sense uh, so what happens when a wants to transmit to b okay i uh, mean why uh, uh, d also wants to transmit to uh, a wants to transmit to b so assume that uh, uh, c is also in the range of a what happens c when it hears about uh, the when it uh, senses the channel it would find that someone is uh, transmitting or someone is using the channel and it uh, would not uh, start transmitting it isn't it isn't it now uh, uh, in in this case what happens uh, say suppose d also wants to transmit since d does not know that a is transmitting even it would start transmitting to b assume that b is in the range of d okay so this problem so what happens a is also transmitting to b and d is also transmitting to b assume that this is also in the range of uh, b so but since a cannot Uh, d cannot hear a what happens uh, there would be a collision because both of them are transmitting to this station b are you getting my point hello so if it uses the carrier sensing carrier sensing means what it has to see that someone is uh, using the channel now because since we don't have a wired connection it might be possible they are Uh, the stations are scattered uh, in a certain uh, area and one station may not be able to, i mean only there would be a limited range of uh, transmission or limited range of uh, uh, data can be uh, sensed by each of the stations okay so b can sense the transmission which is uh, provided by a as well as c c can sense the transmission which can be provided by b as well as d and so on okay uh, so say suppose uh a is uh is uh, forget this b uh, d will uh, consider c b is in the range of c is it clear but a a may not be in the range of c are you getting my point <laughs> hello a is in the range of b c is also in the range of b but c is not in the range of a so while a is transmitting c is sensing the channel it finds that there is no one is transmitting here so even it starts transmitting to this a uh, b so both when both of them are transmitting there would be a collision and this type of problem is known as a hidden station problem are you getting my point what do you mean by hidden station hello okay both this station a as well as c wants to transmit to b a is transmitting a is uh, the transmission of a is cannot be sensed by c because it is not in the range of a and hence even it starts transmitting to b and here there would be a collision for b okay this type of problem is known as a hidden station problem whereas 
now say suppose b wants to transmit to a okay and uh, since uh, that when the transmission is carried out it is in the omnidirectional what do you mean by omnidirectional it is in all the direction it is not that it is only in this direction or in this direction are you getting my point okay it is in the omnidirectional okay also b when b is transmitting even a is receiving i mean a can hear as well as c also can hear but d is not in the range of b now when c hears this b but c wants to transmit to d okay so but when c hears b it finds that someone is using the channel or someone is using the channel and uh, even if if c uh, transmits to d if while b is transmitting to a it can do because there is this signal will not be here okay but uh, since c is sensing that b, someone is trans someone is using the channel it may find it it may assume that it cannot transmit to d uh, due to the collision okay and it has to defer or it has to wait till uh, the transmission is finished by b to a are you getting this so this type of problem is known as a exposed station problem shall i repeat this thing hidden station and exposed station hidden station means what are you have you understood or shall i repeat it okay see uh, b is b wants to send some frame to b uh, a c wants to send the some frame to d okay so b uh, b c uh, in the range of b the two stations are a as well as c d is not in the range of b are you getting me okay so while b is transmitting and when c wants to transmit to the station because uh, all these are in the wireless uh, network so uh, it is not uh, known that d is in this direction or d is in this direction are you getting me where the d is present it is not known okay now when b is transmitting c when uh, then c will sense the channel and it finds that the channel is busy because b is using it but actually if c is transmitting to d at the same time it can do because this part here there there is no uh, no one is transmitting so it can easily or it can uh, without any collision it can it would have transmitted to d but it has to wait because b uh, it senses the channel it finds that the channel is busy is it clear and hence it has to defer or it has to wait till the transmission of or the channel becomes free and then and then it can transmit to uh, the station d so this type of problem is known as a exposed station problem because b is exposed to c and c has to wait till b finishes the transmission so that is nothing but the exposed station problem okay so hidden station problem means what c is not able to sense the uh, transmission which is uh, going on by the station a and it starts transmitting while a is also transmitting so here the problem is everyone is sensing while the data is transmitted but actually the problem occurs at the receiving end you can see that even c senses the channel a senses the channel okay when a finds that the channel is free it is starting transmitting c also channels uh, finds the channel is free even this one is transmitting but the collision has uh, is actually occurring at the receiving end so it has to take care of uh, the activity which is going around the receiver ra rather than the transmitter is this thing clear so this is about the hidden station and exposed station problem any doubts in this now up to some extent uh, this hidden station uh, exposed station problem can be reduced by uh, sending some Uh, hand shaking signals you can say so if a so you can see that a b and c are in this range e a b c and e a are in this range the gray part what you are able to see okay and here 
A, B, D as well as E in this are in this wide circle. Now what happens? Uh, for this, the MECA protocol, MECA stands for multiple access with collision avoidance. Okay, so MECA protocol was introduced. So to overcome that, uh, up to some extent, this uh, hidden station and uh, ex uh, exposed station problem. To overcome that, uh, so here station A, if it wants to send some turn frame to B, it will send a short frame which is known as a RTS. RTS means what? Request to send. Okay, RTS frame is sent. A short frame is sent, which is known as a request to send. It is uh, this short frame may contain the length of the frame, length of the data frame, and the destination, uh, address of the destination. Okay, are you getting me? A short frame, which is known as RTS, is sent to the station B. Now, when the station, this RTS is received by A, uh, C also, and it is received by station B also. The whoever is there in this province. All of them would be able to hear this uh, RTS signal, which is sent to the station B. Are you getting my point? Because it is in the omni omnidirection. Okay. Now, when this RT, uh, RTS uh, frame is received by station B, it would uh, reply to this RTS by sending a, a signal, which is known as a CTS, that is clear to send. Okay. So this. For A would send an RTS signal saying that I want to send a frame, but this RTS signal is heard by all the uh, hosts which are in this uh, area. But see, RTS signal is cannot be heard by the station D because it is away from this A. Okay, but when B sends this CTS, it is heard by D, E, as etc. Are you getting my point? So when station D Station D does not re, uh, receive this RTS, but it, it can hear the CTS. Hello. It can hear the CTS. By looking at this CTS, the D will come to know that there is someone who is trying to communicate with B. And it has to wait till uh, for certain amount of time. Even the CTS contains the length of data frame. It contains the length of data frame as well as the source. Address. Hope you are getting me. By looking at this length of data frame from the CTS by this station D, it would uh, approximate or it would make out up to what time uh, the channel is utilized and it would not transmit the data until that time. Data frame would not be transmitted until that time. So when the CTS is received by station A, it would send the data frame to the station B. Okay. Once uh, after this, uh, after certain amount of time, even D can sense the channel and it can again send, uh, send the RTS or CTS signal to the other stations. Are you getting this request to send and clear to send? In the here we have studied about the hidden station problem. What happens? D is not able to sense the channel which a, uh, while the data is transmitted by A. Okay? But by sending this RTS-CTS, here also D is not able to see the RTS signal which is sent by A. But B is sending CTS which is in the range of D. Are you getting this? By looking at this, B had RTS from D before A. Ah, then it sends CTS to D. Are you getting me? See, what if B had RTS from D, request to send from B before A sent RTS. So, yes, B will send the CTS to D, not to A then. Are you getting Nabil? Uh, and what was the next? When B is free, then to which station B will send CTS A only? Whoever, uh, whichever the RTS comes first, 
to that station it would send the cts is it clear maybe okay so uh, this is about the uh, maca uh, the next uh, there are some refinements which are made uh, to this uh, MACA, which is also known as a MACAW. Okay, in this MACAW, that is uh, Mecca for wireless LAN. Even all these are uh, concepts are used for the wireless itself, but they have made some refinement for this, and they gave the new term that MACAW. Uh, that is Mecca. That is multiple access with collision avoidance for wireless. Okay. In this, uh, apart from this RTS CTS, they have also after the data frame uh, which is uh, received by this uh, host B, it it needs to send an acknowledgement signal. So here earlier they haven't introduced the acknowledgement, but the acknowledgement frame has to be uh, sent by the station B to the station A once it has received the uh, data frame. Okay, that was the first. Uh, 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 modification which was done uh, for this MACA. Now, in case if uh, two RTS are uh, sent by two stations at the same time, say suppose A is also sending an RTS, meanwhile B, D is also sending an RTS. Okay, so there would be a collision here for the RTS. In such a case, uh, the A or the stations would use the uh, back off algorithm what we have studied okay it would wait for some because the cts would not be sent by uh, the station b to a or d isn't it in case of collision so the a or d station would uh, time out and once again they may send it the rts signal so this was uh, uh, some modification which was done for for this uh, original mecca protocol the first one is to send the acknowledgement frame in case if uh, more than one rts would fail okay uh, or if they collide, then it, uh, the station has to wait for the uh, random period of time. And that random period is uh, decided by the exponential binary back of algorithm. And then they can retransmit this RTS signal once again. And now uh, this uh, ex, uh, ex, uh, the back of algorithm, it is not meant for the individual station. But the back of algorithm, it is meant for the uh, between the source and destination pair. Okay, so between the source and so between A and B, uh, the number of time collision is increased. Then they, uh, if it is there, then the back exponential binary back of algorithm is meant between the two stations. Say suppose if A and C wants to communicate with this RTS. Okay, and if there is no collision, then it is fine. But between A and B, if there is a collision, then they use this exponential binary back of algorithm. Is it clear? In the earlier case of uh, whatever we have studied, it was for the station itself. But here it was between the source and destination. If the collision is there, then they use this exponential binary back of algorithm. Fine. Then uh, it, it also takes care about the congestion control. It provides the information about the congestion uh, among uh, within this particular uh, area or within this uh, particular uh, network okay uh, these are all uh, uh, the modification which was done for the mecca protocol is this thing clear everyone hello Am I audible? Any doubts here? Okay, then we'll stop here and we'll continue in the next lecture.